Company, DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents The Cavalcade of America. Tonight's star, Lee Bowman. <laughs> Our DuPont Cavalcade, A Mockingbird Sang, starring Lee Bowman as Beasley Nickel, begins in 1863, during the war between the states. In a Confederate military hospital in Georgia, not far from Chattanooga, a wounded lieutenant is dictating a report to his superior officer. September 15th, 1863, to General Nathan Bedford Forrest. Sir, the following is the true and complete account of my mission behind enemy lines at Chattanooga. On the morning of the 10th, while in bivouac with the 15th Corps at Missionary Ridge, I proceeded under special orders to your quarters at Chickamauga to obtain the details of my assignment. Lieutenant Beasley Nickel reporting to General Forrest for special orders, sir. At ease, Lieutenant. Sit down. Thank you, sir. Hmm. Bragg was right. You do talk like a Yankee. <laughs> Me, no offense, of course. Uh, not at all, sir. You see, I, I attended Princeton and I was an actor in civilian life. An actor? Well, it may come in handy on this mission I've got for you. Uh, what kind of play acting did you do? Oh, all kinds. Mostly Shakespearean roles. I was with Edwin Forrest's company. Edwin Forrest? Why, well, he's my first cousin. Really, sir? Oh, strange he never mentioned having a general for a kinsman. <laughs> That's Ed Forrest for you. Always did resent share in the limelight. <laughs> well, <clears throat> to the point. Lieutenant, here are your orders. You're to spend two or three months in Chattanooga. Chat... Chattanooga? But I thought... You thought right. By the time you get there, Chattanooga will be Yankee territory. That's why you'll be wearing a blue uniform. A Yankee uniform? Just so. You'll be carrying the credentials of a Captain John Curry, an emissary from General Grant. I see. And when do I start for uh, Chattanooga? Tonight, on foot. You'll be met at Walden's Ridge by Lieutenant Crockett and the Sergeant Goforth. They'll accompany you into Chattanooga. Will they be in Yankee uniforms, too? Yes, but so will several thousand other soldiers in that territory, so don't make any mistakes. Here, here are their photographs. Study them. Memorize their features. And after I get there, General? Well, <clears throat> of course, you might uh, go to General Rosecrans and ask him if he's got anything new on his mind. If he has, get me word. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you happen to know, sir, if Yankee generals make a habit of telling military secrets to any lieutenant that comes along in a blue uniform? If that lieutenant listens at the right keyholes. Yes, sir. I see what you mean, sir. And what then? Just keep your ears pointed and your eyes squinted and get me word what happens before it happens. Do I, uh, make myself clear? Oh, yes. I yes, sir. You, uh, <clears throat> you may not get out alive, you know. If it be not now, yet will come. The readiness is all. Eh? What's that? Shakespeare. Oh, yes, yes. Very apt. Yes, sir. Well, goodbye, Lieutenant. And good luck. At nightfall, having secured my credentials from secret intelligence, I set out upon my journey wearing the uniform of a captain in the Union Army. There was a full moon and the weather was mild. After crossing Walden's Ridge, I paused for a few moments and lit up my pipe. Then I heard... Who's there? Well, uh, a mockingbird. Methinks it was a nightingale and not the lark. Nightly, she sings on yon pomegranate tree. Awake, sweet Julia. All right, Sergeant, grab him. Yep. Hey, what's, I got the what's the idea? Holding against your ribs, soldier. One move and you're dead. Now go on, drop the rifle. Now what? Take it, Sergeant. I'll sit over there on that log and let me have a look at you. Well, Lieutenant, what do you see? I see a Yankee that gives up easy. <laughs> what's so funny? You're taking me for a Yankee. Now, I'd never have taken you for a Yankee, even if you are wearing a blue uniform. Thou knowest that the fashion of a doublet or a hat or a cloak is nothing to a man. It's him. They said he'd be spouting Shakespeare. Are you quite sure that was Shakespeare, Sergeant? That's what it sounded like to me. 
And what did it sound like to you, Lieutenant Crockett? My apologies, Lieutenant Nickel. But we can't be too careful, you know. I agree. Then uh, you won't take offense if <laughs> I ask to see your papers, Lieutenant Nickel. Captain Curry. Hmm? I have now become one Captain John Curry of the Provo Marshal's office, carrying a message from General Grant to the Union commander of Chattanooga, General Rosecrans. Here's the dispatch which identifies me. Captain John Curry. Well, let's see. Now, where'd you get this? It's signed by Grant himself. Uh, so it is. You see, uh, uh, General Grant made a few mistakes in grammar when he wrote the dispatch, so I, uh, I kind of fixed it up a little to deliver to General <laughs> Rosecrans. So you're a forger as well as an actor, Lieutenant Nichol. Uh, the name is Captain Curry. Don't forget that. I'm sorry. And I brought along some fine Yankee names and credentials for you and Sergeant Goforth, too. You better christen us now so we can get used to them. All right. You're Lieutenant McClure, and he's Corporal Moon. All right. Corporal, I'm a sergeant, yeah? In the Confederate Army. In the Union Army, you're demoted. You're Corporal Moon. Why, you've been up from lieutenant to captain. That's not fair. Well, maybe you'd rather do the talking when we get to General Rosecrans headquarters. Oh, not me. I can't talk Yankee talk. Oh, then get the boat ready, Corporal. We will proceed to Chattanooga immediately. Captain Curry? Yes, sir? General Rosecrans will see you immediately. This way. Thank you, sir. Captain Curry reporting on special mission for General Grant, sir. At ease, Captain. What are your orders? My orders are to deliver this message into your hands. Colonel Wilder? Yes, sir. Take this and examine the paper in handwriting. Yes, sir. Well, you've traveled a long distance, Captain. Yes, sir. By what route did you come? The, uh... Most direct possible, sir. Hmm. Have you been with the Union forces long, Captain, uh... Curry. Two years, sir. Where did you enlist? To, uh, Pennsylvania, sir. Ah. Well, I, I won't keep you any longer, Captain. You must be very tired. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night, Captain. One moment, Captain. Uh, yes, sir? About this dispatch from General Grant. If you are no doubt aware, a duplicate message was sent. Are you acquainted with the Baron? Why, no, Colonel. I, uh, I was not told the message was to be sent in duplicate. The other messenger hasn't reached here yet. Oh? Well, I, I'm sure he'll show up, sir. I trust he will. Otherwise, we won't be able to honor your credentials. Well, then I'd say he certainly better show up, sir. That's exactly. And I suggest you stick close to your quarters, Captain seems there are some spies in town, and they're wearing blue uniforms. Spies in uniform? <laughs> That's a novel idea. Not so very novel, but very dangerous for the spies. Oh, at the beginning of the war, it was comparatively easy. But now we have ways of checking on anyone in a matter of hours. And uh, how do you deal with them? Hang them in a matter of minutes. If it be not now, yet will come. The readiness is all. What's that, Captain? Nothing. Just a quotation. Good night, Colonel. Good luck, Captain. That evening, I rejoined Crockett and go forth at Mrs. Whiteside's boarding house, where we'd been quartered on arrival in Chattanooga. And after informing them of my interview with General Rosecrans, we discussed our strategy. Now, whatever we do, we've got to do it fast. Now, that courier with the duplicate message from Grant's headquarters may arrive tonight. He's going to arrive tonight. You're the man. What do you mean? I don't worry about not being able to talk Yankee talk. Just say you're a loyal Tennessean. That won't even be a lie. But the message, you gave the only copy to General Rosecrans. Uh, I'm an actor, remember? I know it by heart. I'll make a copy. That still won't prevent the other courier coming. No, but they'll have to decide which is the imposter. That'll take time, and time is what we need. Well, I don't hanker to spend it in prison. Hey, look, why Boys, don't... Boys, where are you? Right, that's old lady. Uh, in here, Miss Whiteside. Oh, here you are. Supper's just about ready. Are your rooms still like it? Just fine, ma'am. And you must be Captain Curry. Yes, Mrs. Whiteside. How do you do? Well, I could swear I'd seen you somewhere before, Captain. Ever spend any time in Virginia? No, I, I'm afraid not. Really? Must have been an actor in some play or other that looked like you. Or maybe it's just your way of talking. Cultivated life. Thank you. 
Well, I must get back to my kitchen. I was just saying, I wish it was winter. I'd fix you some crackling bread. Nothing I like better than crackling bread. Oh, me too, ma'am. Uh, where did you say you were from, Corporal? Uh, Ohio, ma'am. You were the first boy I ever met from the North. Knew what crackling bread was, much less liked it. Uh, well, uh, uh, he used to visit relatives in the South. Didn't you, Corporal? Huh? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, well, if you'll excuse me, uh, I'll call you when it's ready. Well, what you make of that, Lieutenant Nichol? Uh, Captain Curry, and don't forget your own name, Corporal Moon. Oh, sorry. You're right, though. She's suspicious. You done much talking to her? Yeah, she did most of the talking. What about? The theater. She's hipped on the subject of plays and actors. Oh, that's bad. You don't suppose she might have seen you acting in Edwin Forrest Company sometime, do you? Well, we'll soon find out. In the meantime... Hey, what's that? Somebody at the door. Sounds real military, too. I better get on no, down. No, no, wait. Let Mrs. Whiteside answer. Open up. Who is it? Provo Marshal, hurry up. Uh-oh. All right, all right. You don't need to knock the door down. I'm coming as fast as I can. Come on. We better hide in this closet just in case. Right well, what is it? We're from the Provo Marshal's office, ma'am. We have orders from General Rosecrans to take Captain Curry into custody. Uh uh, he, he ain't here. We have orders to search the house, ma'am. Where's his room? Right at the top of the stairs. Just go on up, search all you like. Uh, if he's here, we'll find him. No offense, ma'am. Well, that's all right. Take your time. You can come out now. They've gone upstairs. We better get out of here fast. There'll be a few minutes ransacking your rooms. You better spend those minutes planning what you're going to do. Now, what's your interest in us, Mrs. Whiteside? My husband and two boys are wearing gray uniforms. If I help you, I help them. We need all the help we can get. Too bad you're not an actor. But I am an actor. I thought you were. Now, listen to me. There's a company of actors here in town right now. My niece is the leading lady. She might fix it so you could hide out with the theater company till this blows over. Well, what about my friends here? What are their chances of getting back across the lines? Not a chance, honey. Oh, well, then there's only one way. Let them arrest you and brazen it out. How you mean? Well, listen, Crockett. You tell them you were the courier sent with a duplicate message from General Grant. Well, what happened to the message? There's no time to fix one up now. Well, uh, uh, tell them you lost it. You were waylaid by rebel scouts. You, uh, you and Goforth overpowered them, but they got away with the dispatch. Those feds never will believe it. You've got to make them believe it, son. And uh, your niece, Mrs. Whiteside. What's her name? Hunter Cragwell. Just go to the theater. Sneak into a dressing room and wait. Tell her, I sent you. They're coming downstairs now. You'd better go. Good luck, Nico. If we don't see each other again, I mean... I mean, if we should fail. We fail. But screw your courage to the sticking place, and we'll not fail. You are listening to the DuPont Cavalcade of America, starring Lee Bowman in A Mockingbird Sang. Sponsored by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. The 85,000 men and women of the DuPont Company extend to you the season's greetings and best wishes for a happy new year. As one of America's chemical manufacturers, the DuPont Company will continue in 1951 and the years ahead to devote its efforts to producing the vital materials required by the nation and to serve you with DuPont products that bring you better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> The DuPont Cavalcade continues starring Lee Bowman as Lieutenant Beasley Nickel in A Mockingbird Sang. Nickel is reporting to his Confederate commander, General Forrest. He is masquerading as a Captain Curry of the Union Army behind enemy lines in occupied Chattanooga. It was a risky plan, but we had no alternative. If my fellow spies, Crockett and Goforth, could keep up the masquerade of our mission and the questioning by General Rosecrans's Union intelligence officers, the worst that could happen to them would be loss of their rank in the Union Army. My case was a little different. I stood to lose my rank, too, along with my life. 
By zigzagging through back alleys, I managed to reach the theater without being seen. I gave the doorman a Yankee silver dollar, and he admitted me to the leading lady's dressing room. I didn't have to wait very long. Well, who are you? How did you get in here? The usual way. Your aunt sent me. I see. Are you in trouble? The Provo Marshal's men are looking for me. What for? Seems my uniform is the wrong color. You seem very cavalier about it. Don't you know they hang people for that? They can also hang lady spies if they take a notion to. Ah. Uh, what did my aunt tell you about me? She would know what to do. If you're looking for a place to hide out for a spell... I think that's what your aunt had in mind, but I'd rather not. But you... Let did. me explain. I'm an actor, or was, before the war. That's why I was chosen for this assignment. And what exactly is your assignment? To find out when and if General Rosecrans intends to attack our positions in Georgia and how he plans to commit his troops. That's quite an assignment. Well, it's worth any risk. If I could only get back to Rosecrans's quarters. How did you get there the first time? Our scouts intercepted a courier from General Grant. I came in his place with an altered message, of course. What our Confederate intelligence failed to find out was that all such messages are now sent in duplicate. And the other courier has arrived? That, I don't know. Even if he has, it would be a question of his word against mine. That is, if I could get there with a duplicate of my message. But how can you? A little grease paint, some false whiskers might do the trick. I've played dual roles before. <laughs> you may be a good actor, but you're not that good. Yes, I know. But I've got to do something. You see, I'm not alone on this assignment. I have two men working with me. Have they been arrested? They've been taken in for questioning. But they're insisting they're Union couriers. Their story is that they were bringing the duplicate message but were waylaid by rebel scouts and lost it. I see. And now you plan to appear in false whiskers, claiming to be a certain Union captain who recaptured the lost dispatch. Something like that. It won't work. No? Have you a better idea? Yes. Let me take the dispatch to Rosecrans. No, I, I couldn't let you take a risk like that. Besides, what kind of story could you tell them? That I met this Captain X. What is his name? He's using the name of a Union courier captured by our scouts. Lieutenant McClure. All right. How does this sound? I met Lieutenant McClure, plied him with champagne. He became careless and left his dispatch behind. He could be court-martialed for that. It's better than being hanged as a spy. And what do I do? Go and give yourself up. But the... I mean, you heard they were looking for you, and here you are. The soul of innocence. That might work. Do, uh, do you realize the risk you'd be taking? I think I can manage it. You see, Colonel Wilder, General Rosencrantz's aide, is a great enthusiast of the theater. He's been to see our play three times. I'm sure he'll be understanding. Miss Cragwell, I, uh, I'm not often at a loss for words, but... Uh, tell me afterwards. When the hurly-burly's done? When the battle's lost and won? Yes. And we'll win it. We must win this cause. <laughs> there, there, now, Miss Cragwell, don't take on so. But, but, Colonel Wilder, when I heard that, that that poor Lieutenant McClure had been arrested. No, not arrested, ma'am. Just brought in for interrogation. Then I can see him. Oh, well, that'd be a little irregular. But, but you could arrange it. Well. Alone, I mean. You see, the reason for the whole thing is that he didn't want to implicate me. I don't understand, ma'am. Well, we met quite by chance. I'd no idea he was here on an important mission. You see, he came to my dressing room and... Well, I, I didn't notice this until I returned from the theater tonight. It must have dropped out of his coat. Here, yeah, let me see that. Is it important? Miss Craigwell, the whole outcome of the war may depend on this document. Oh, but I'm sure he didn't know that. Is there no way to save him? Why, uh, there's got to be. It, uh, it wasn't really negligence, just a natural human failing. Oh. Oh, Colonel, you don't know what it would mean to me. Yes, well, you just leave it to me, Miss Cragwell. I'll arrange everything. Uh, 
Captain Curry reporting to General Rosecrans, sir. I understand the general wished to see me. Yes, indeed. We've had the devil's own time locating you, Captain. Where have you been? I went to the theater, sir. Oh, you did? And afterwards, uh, well, I, I had no idea you were looking for me, sir. I'm sorry. Well, you should have left word at your billet. Well, then it was something important? Of the first importance. The other messenger from General Grant has arrived. Oh? Yes. Colonel Wilder has put grave doubts in my mind. Certain inconsistencies. Uh, inconsistencies? Colonel Wilder. Yes, General Rosecrans. Bring that courier in. I want these two men to confront each other. Yes, sir. Oh, this way. Cap Captain Curry, this man who brought the duplicate of your message from General Grant is here. Now, do you happen to recognize him? McClure. You're safe. Yes, sir, Captain. Well, uh, General Rosecrans, I, I can't tell you what this moment means to me. I, I had no idea my old friend, Lieutenant McClure, was assigned yes. to this mission. Well, it's all been rather confusing. But it... Seems to be straightened out now. Uh, sir, you'll never know how grateful I Captain, am. Captain, I should be grateful to you. To me, sir? Yes. In fact, I'm, I'm so pleased with your work that I'm going to take you into my confidence. You see, I've been most discouraged of late over the state of our communications. But your prompt and successful delivery of General Grant's message has convinced me that we can begin our offensive against the rebel forces in Georgia. And we will as soon as General Hooker arrives with the 16th and 17th Corps from Virginia. Oh, that's splendid news, sir. Yes, indeed. And if all goes well, Thomas will engage the rebel center at Lookout Mountain. I expect that will be no later than the 19th of this month. And with that, General Forrest, I will close this report. I regret that I cannot deliver it in person. Rosecrans inadvertently gave me the information you wanted, and I was able to get word to you. However, as I rode out, a Yankee sentry stopped me, and in the ensuing argument, several shots were exchanged. I am sorry that I was wounded and hospitalized, and I'm even sorrier I couldn't stop to bury the Yankee sentry. Lieutenant Nickel. Yes? General Forrest is here to see you, sir. Oh, General Forrest? Here at the hospital? Good. Let him come in. Yes, sir. Come in, sir. Well, General Forrest, it's, it's awfully good to see you, sir. It's good to see you, Lieutenant. No, no, lie back, lad. Rest. How's your wound? Oh, it's not so deep as a well. Not so wide as a church door, but tis enough. Twill sir. Hmm. How goes the war, General? Well, the Yankees attacked at Chickamauga. Thanks to the message you got to me, we were ready for them. Was it a great battle, sir? A terrible battle. And we whipped the Yankees bad. But only God knows what it really will mean or amount to. Confederate brains lick the Yankees. But they lick us in the end because there are more of them. Is that what you're trying to say? Maybe so. There's a line in a play I once appeared in with Edwin Forrest, General, that seems to sum this whole war up. It goes, I heard so and was armed for it ere I came. But let us make noble use of this great ruin. Those are fine words to remember, son. Fine words. Let us make noble use of this great ruin. Now that's for you to do, son. Life does go on, doesn't it? Yes, sir. And what we fought for, honor, virtue, those things will go on too, sir. They will not die. Not only in our own time, but in the years that lie ahead. to Lee Bowman and the Cavalcade players for tonight's story. Our star will return in a moment. And now, once again, here is our star, Lee Bowman, with a message from the American Heritage Foundation. With the conflict between the principles of liberty and of domination by force breaking into the open again, 
The peoples of the world are watching the United States as never before. They wish to know whether free government is vigorous enough to cope with the tremendous issues and challenges of our time. Remember, our government can only be as strong and effective as we are ourselves. So, in the future, attend conscientiously to your duties of citizenship. Develop a keen and active interest in your government. Vote seriously, with purpose and resolution, and stand by to do whatever is asked in what has become our struggle for survival. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was written by Robert Tolman and was adapted from the novel The Mockingbird Sang at Chickamauga by Alfred Leland Crabb, published by the Bob's Merrill Publishing Company. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Voorhees. The program is directed by John Zoller. And this is Frank Gallup speaking. The DuPont Cavalcade of America comes to you from the Velasco Theater in New York and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Chemistry.